Hello, my name's Simon. I've been asked to help explain clinical trials from the point of view of a cancer patient or carer. In the next few minutes, I'll be telling you what clinical trials are, what is involved for the people taking part in one, and how you can find out whether there is a suitable trial in your region, either for you or the person you're caring for. So, what are clinical trials? Clinical trials can test screening, diagnosis, and treatment methods. For example, a new blood test or a scan to detect cancer, the latest technology to treat a particular type of cancer, or it may be an assessment of the effects of a drug, a new radiotherapy technique, or a surgical procedure. A trial could also involve analyzing blood samples, for example, when studying genetics. Clinical trials help ensure that cancer treatments are safe and that they can potentially benefit patients. They are controlled by strict ethical and legal rules and are carefully monitored. Before being offered the chance to take part in such a study, the patient's care will have been discussed by a group of clinicians known as a multidisciplinary team who meet regularly to review and agree the best form of individual treatment. Trials investigate which treatments are the most effective and they enable doctors to understand the experience of those being treated, including any side effects. People starting a clinical trial involving a drug treatment for the first time may also be worried about how the drugs or treatment they are being given will affect them. Are they right to be concerned? Margaret, I believe you took part in a clinical trial at Admirals. Yes, I did. Um, were you worried about entering a trial? Not at all. I was delighted to have, have the offer. And were you briefed about it beforehand? I was, yes. Were you uh, warned about side effects in advance? Y yes, I was. And how yes. was your experience on the trial? One experience happened, only one experience during the whole trial, which was um, the end of November that year, when I suddenly had a great enormous headache. It was disconcerting at the time. I called the emergency services and was whisked up to Adam Brooks by ambulance and seen and had a, a, a scan, I believe. So they had a big debate about whether I should continue or I should stop the trial. And they decided, yes, I could continue. So I was sent home with very, very strong painkiller and told not to take one until I'd eaten something. And I was all right. Good no recurrence, and I completed the trial a year later. And uh, were you put off by that when uh, you were asked whether you wanted to carry on with the trial? No. So if you were doing another trial in the future, would you be concerned about the side effects? No, it wouldn't worry me, no. And, and why is that? Well, it might do me some good, but it might do other people some good as well, and I'd be happy to go ahead on that basis. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. In fact, most patients are able to tolerate a treatment or trial drug pretty well. The important thing is to keep in touch with the research team as there's usually something that can be done to help control side effects. Of course, side effects are not just to do with trials. They may also occur in standard non-trial treatments. People taking part in trials may wonder, will doing this help me? Will it help control my cancer? Well, the trial drug or other treatment may be more effective than the current standard one, or it may be equally effective as the standard treatment, but have fewer side effects. Randomized clinical trials are available to people of all age groups. They involve an experimental treatment being compared with the current standard one, and those not receiving the new treatment will be no worse off. But just occasionally, the trials doctors may discover that the standard treatment is in fact better. The knowledge gained in a clinical trial will help people in future by allowing researchers to compare drugs or techniques involving a large number of people and to see which treatment is the most effective for a given type of cancer. We should remember that without people taking part in clinical trials, medical treatments would not evolve and improve. So, trials may benefit the participants, but the information gained will definitely benefit others in the future. Dr. Scrace and Dr. Basu will now explain about the categories of these research studies and how they're organised. 
The various categories of clinical trial are grouped into phases. Now some people find this confusing, so here's how it works. Phase one trials are aimed at finding out the right dose of a treatment that can be used safely, how much of treatment gets into the body, and what side effects, if any, may occur. This is a first look at how effective the treatment may be. This usually leads on to a phase two trial using the dosage of the drug that's been shown to be safe when given to patients during phase one. During this phase, researchers start to check how well the treatment is working, whether it may indeed be effective. A phase three trial is the type that most patients will be involved in. The aim of this category of research will often be to compare an existing drug or some other treatment technique, whether it's surgery or radiotherapy, against a new one. For example, a research drug whose safety and effectiveness was tested during the earlier categories of trial, as we've seen, phases one and phase two. To ensure that the comparisons are fair, patients may be chosen at random to be in one of two or more treatment groups, known as arms. For example, a group of people may be chosen to receive a new drug treatment in what is known as the active arm, or they may receive the standard existing treatment in what is known as the control arm. This selection process is called randomization and is performed by a computer program which minimizes bias and allocates equal numbers of patients to each of the treatment arms. A further way of ensuring that nobody can unintentionally affect the results of the trial is to ensure that patients taking part within the trial are not told of the drugs that they are being given. Dr. Scrace also talked about the comparisons between new drugs and standard ones. In some trials, a particular drug may be tested against a substance which has no active ingredient, known as a placebo, and this may be given in addition to the standard treatments. So who gets to go on a clinical trial? Most hospitals treating cancer patients offer such studies, run by clinical trials teams made up of specialist research nurses, doctors, practitioners, and data managers. The aim is that all patients should have the opportunity to join a clinical trial, so long as they are assessed as eligible and they wish to take part. The process of signing up for a clinical trial is fairly straightforward. One of the main principles is informed consent. It's essential that every patient can understand what the trial is all about and is competent to make up his or her mind about whether to take part. Patients and carers have plenty of time to ask any questions they have when deciding whether or not to give their consent. During a trial, participants are free to withdraw at any time without providing a reason if they choose not to. If they do decide to withdraw, doctors will give them the standard non-trial treatment currently available. Roy, were you worried about entering a clinical trial? Uh, I think worry is putting it a bit strongly. I think I was concerned. Um, concerned that perhaps I would get some side effects. Concerned that perhaps I might find um, that the tablets weren't actually doing me any good. But um, no, I mean, I thought it through and in the end I thought, you know, well, probably this is the right decision. And did you experience any side effects? Yes, I had quite severe diarrhoea to begin with. I had uh, some hair loss. I also had tiredness, a lot of tiredness. But after a while, I found that my body adapted to that. It, it seemed to change. And, and after a while, it wasn't too bad. It became the norm, if you like. And what happened then? Um, I then discovered after about 18 months, unfortunately, I still had a secondary cancer returned. Um, and therefore, I had to come off the tablets for a while in order to have the operation to have that removed. Um, but the advantage was that I could then go back directly onto these tablets again and take part in the trial again, carry on uh, for another two years. Roy, what were the steps before you took part in the clinical trial? I was approached, first of all, by the clinical nurse researcher here at the hospital to ask whether or not I would consider taking part in the trial. Um, he explained to me what the trial was, he explained how it operated, and I was given uh, an information sheet that gave me a lot more uh, information and details about how the trial operated, what sort of side effects I might get, um, the various steps that might be involved in the, in the trial and all the different possible outcomes of that, which was very useful and I found that quite helpful. So this was what, a, a patient information sheet? Yes, it was a patient sheet that, that basically outlined how the trial operated. Um, 
And did you discuss it with your family? Yes, I took it away, had to think about it, discussed it with my immediate family, and at the end of it we decided that, yes, this was going to be a good step for me. Um, so what happened then? I then came back to the hospital, I could ask them any questions I had, and I had a few questions to straighten out the, the details of it, but, but basically I was asked to sign a consent form, and once I'd done that, then I was given the tablets. Um, there was no pressure put upon me at all to take part. I could have said, I could have stopped the trial at any point, I could have backed out of the trial and said, I've had enough, um, I don't want to do this anymore. So overall, are you glad that you did take part in the trial? Oh yeah, hopefully it will contribute something to learning about what exactly goes on in, 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 in these situations. And I hope that, that as a result, the researchers will be able to get something out of this. Um, so yes, I mean, it wasn't unbearable. It was something that you know, I felt I had to go through. And therefore, at the end of it, I hope I've helped contribute something to, to the learning process. Thank you. Another concern some people have is how secure the information that is recorded about them will be. Here's Joe to tell us about this key aspect of clinical trials. Hi, I'm Joe. Before a trial can go ahead, the trial protocol is sent to the Research Ethics Committee for approval. The protocol is a manual describing all the details of how a trial should be run. The committee scrutinise every aspect, including how patients will be looked after, as well as the protection of the information about each patient which is gathered during the trial. The patients are given a number, similar to a hospital number. This is used by the researchers and the patient's identity is never revealed, even when the information is looked at many years later. This process is known as anonymising the data. I said at the start that I would tell you how you can find out whether there is a suitable trial in your region. The best way is online. On the screen you can see the link to a website that lists clinical trials. But if you aren't able to go online, you should just ask staff at your clinic or the practice nurse at your GP surgery. So if you are invited to take part in a clinical trial, please think seriously about doing so. And if you are not invited, Perhaps you should ask about which trials are available for you in your region. It's worth remembering the treatments for today's patients and the benefits they bring are available largely thanks to other patients who are willing to take part in clinical studies in years gone by. Well, I hope you now have a better idea about what clinical trials are and how they can be very helpful in researching treatments for cancer patients. Also, that taking part in one can be straightforward and not at all scary.